ones. So here we are just seconds away from the second uh, this year's practice of science talk. And we have a really exciting speaker. Uh, basically, I wanted to start with just a short, like when I was, if I could essentially um, uh, rewind my life about 10 years back in time, I could find myself like reading one particular book for a period of time of like a few months. And uh, I would carry that book everywhere with me. Uh, on, I, would, I would read the book on the bus in parks. And uh, I, I don't have the book to show you because it looks really funny. It's all um, covered with rotten peaches and bananas because I used to carry it with, in my backpack everywhere. And um, so the name of that book is Understanding Computers and Cognition. And it's really an amazing book. It's a book about everything, about language, technology, life, science, human mind, cognition. And um, our today's guest is the author of that book. And um, to write a book like that, you definitely need to be a really interdisciplinary thinker to uh, look at science and human life from a wider perspective. And considering the fact that our today's speaker, Dr. Fernando Flores, has a degree in engineering, in philosophy, and he's a former politician, as far as I'm informed and entrepreneur as well. He's definitely equipped with such a mindset to tell us about science and human psyche uh, from a wider angle, like where the science is heading and where we as scientists actually belong in that line of progress. Uh, he has a fascinating uh, biography. He's a former finance minister of the Republic of Chile and he was imprisoned once Augusto Pinochet uh, came to power in 1970s. He spent three years in prison and uh, he's currently the senator of the two northernmost regions in the Republic of Chile and the former presidential candidate, a uh, truly fascinating person. So please welcome Fernando Flores. Thank you for the invitation and, and uh, coming here. I'm always ha happy to be in this area. We live in Berkeley with my family since 1983. I still keep my house there. And uh, now I'm a senator, but I come here three or four times a year to see the family. And this is the time that we're in vacation there. Then I am here. That's why I'm doing this talk. Yeah, you don't pay me the invitation. <laughs> well, I, the, the topic that we select was about education, policy making, and games. Let me tell why I pick up this thing. Sure, I am interested in that. I am a senator, and one of the things that we do like senator is passing laws. And law is policy making. But we are very bad in general. In Chile, horrible. But I am sure that here you don't do a lot better. The parliament here is not being very useful to create a good mood about recovering the economy. Then, my opinion, the parliament are one of the institutions more obsolete that are in the world. And only compared with education and health. And we have three institutions that are in, in trouble, in particular in, in this country. And, uh, and I like this kind of problem. Uh, I have been there for seven years, senators, but all the previous 25 years I live here. And I live here like an entrepreneur, an academic, and invent companies in Silicon Valley and software and and run these kind of things. And it was not bad, it was very good. But before that, I was a political prisoner for three years, in a very tough condition in Chile, between 73 and 76. And before that, for three years, I was official of the Chilean government, and for almost a year, less, I was Minister of Economic and Finance and something else. And I worked with the agenda the day of the coup. Then I had very dramatic time there. And, but before that, I was official of the Catholic University, almost like, like president when I was 26. Then I have this life. Then my passion really is education. You ask me to me what really I'm interested in life? Education. And how I make money? I make money making re-education. <laughs> what do you mean? I was hired by a big company like the IBM, ABB, 
CMX, telephone in Chile, copper mine, that normally have a crisis. A crisis normally of big losses. Something in the market has disappeared. Mm -hmm. If I were a consultant today, I will be doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. and, and basically the world shifted. And they don't know what happened. And they have a strategic plan. They have a great consultant. I used to make a joke to the people in Germany. So you bring a guy from Chile that doesn't speak German, almost speak English, uh, and pay me a lot. It's because you're already faced with all the other consultants. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason that they, they can do something so weird like that. And it's true. Then one of the things that happened in business that is that sometimes the world shifts and the whole thing disappears. Pharmaceutical companies, you are here in some moment, I also work with some of them, some moment appear biotechnology, and biotechnology begins to change the whole reality that they have. The so companies are very good when the world is stable. IBM has all the scientists that you can imagine, all the PhD and and doctor and Nobel Prize, they have nine, hmm? and center in different parts of the world. But really, the new world was invented by Microsoft, Mr. Steve Jobs, and now the people from Google. Why the big companies, they cannot do it, or they disappear? Some of you remember DEC, hmm? Digital Equipment Corporation. Very intelligent people, but they were unable to reinvent themselves when it was necessary. So the reinvention is a mental problem, but it's also an opportunity, timing problem. You need to know how to do it. And these are the kind of things that, that I have been doing myself. When I was a, a 19, I was married with the same person I'm still married, that's here, in some place, which is there. And a, that's a reinvention. The students are supposed not to invent. This kind of when I finished my degree in engineering at 22, I have already two children, almost three. And I uh, arrived right here, and I reinvent myself again, from prison to Silicon Valley. And then I did a PhD in philosophy in Berkeley. Hmm? And, I, and I took this philosophy to do uh, management, consulting, and software design. Hmm? So never I have been doing what's supposed to be doing. When people tell me, oh, I was in philosophy department, studying philosophy, I said, why you are here? Because I want to invent management. Why you don't go to management school? Because they cannot invent it. Said, and who guarantees you they're going to be here? No one. Well, certain idea I have. I was lucky. I, I was doing it. And then let us start doing a couple of things. I believe the old education about knowledge is obsolete. And it's obsolete because knowledge begins to be a commodity. Simple knowledge. The guy that knows how to use the network, you don't need to, to use knowledge. And this sophisticated knowledge is different. The thing that you do here is different because you have laboratories. And you are not dealing with knowledge that already exists. You are doing with invention of knowledge. That's something very different. But most of the institutions don't, are not interested in invention of knowledge. They are interested in reinventing the same thing. But you look, what happened in people is invention. And, and the crucial thing for me is the new education needs to be based in intentionality, knowing knowledge. How you transform intentions in reality. And, think, think, and also how you seduce people to the new invention. And, and third, how you enroll more people in this new invention. And, and you do that navigating in a world that never is the same. Let us start with one very recent that you have here in America today, Obama. Obama is an invention of himself. And nothing of what he do is supposed to happen. Hmm? Yeah. Obama, Osana, huh? Hussein, you see all the things against work in his favor. But basically what this person offered to the country is an invention. We need a different United States. And always the great leaders do the same thing. We need a different thing that coming back to the old thing. Yeah. If you see the Martin Luther King, it's the same story. So we need some invention about the future, but it's also coming back to the past. Hmm? So invention is not something that comes from nowhere. Hmm? And, uh, and I have been very, very engaged in that kind of invention. Hmm? And for me, my study of philosophy in Berkeley has been enormously valuable. Then I, when I say that 
education needs to be reinvented doesn't mean that we have thrown away everything that exists. We need to bring to the center. Let, let us talk about computers, for example. Many people talk about computers like information machines. And really, it is that they do that too. But the more interesting thing with computers is that they are network machines. What do you mean they are network machines? Allow us first to be interconnected. To be interconnected in different latitudes, different places, different technology, different matters. Mm? There is no profession today that has not been affected by this. And the search thing that it happened with, with the internet today is it's an identity machine. And then what, what I said, what happened in the internet really is you coordinate your life with other people in many different ways. And coordination is the center of business. Mm? Logistics, banking, finance. But it's something new coming. Social application like Facebook, huh? LinkedIn, has to do about who you are in the world. And who you are in the world depends on what your race has been doing. So identity is always depends on two things. What other people are talking about you and who you are talking to other people. Hmm? And what other people, and more interesting thing that want to, the people want to know about you is what are your intentions. See, if you go to the venture capital, I suppose here some of them are dreaming some when you finish with your bones. <laughs> Scientists now are entrepreneurs, most of them. It's about intentions. Hmm? Intention about making something to happen that is not obvious that happened, that you know how to put together and from this wealth, benefit, satisfactions, uh, well being, medicine, or anything can be invented. But if you look, most of our education doesn't work for that. You so say, what's interesting here is the reinvention of education, not only for children. We, my family, own a school in Chile, private school. And we have experiment about that. But also the education of adults. For example, some of you are going to be entrepreneurs of medicine, but your science education doesn't work for that. Then, for discussing this thing about, about why this is important, let me use a diagram here that I'm going to put here. Market. And what the markets are? The markets are the place in which people can make offers without control of governance, in the limit of the boundary of governance. In, you, in medicine, you have the FDA. Mm? You have the ethical committee, you have many things. Mm? Then, but the, the great invention of market is the initiative of people to make offer and celebrate offer and decline, decline offer is done. And here is where enterprises live here. So, private business live here. But also part of our private life live here. But also you have something that I would call law. Second system. My business today is to be a guy that makes laws. Uh, what the law? Law has to do with a domain in which prohibition exists, penalties exist, order exists. And one of the roles of the market is to put limit of the law, to put certain limit to this guy. There are no business without that. But you look what happened with the with bank crisis here. One of the things that they did they invented, they invented a way to do something that escaped to the law regulation. And suddenly they discovered that they had losses. Hmm? But they had big bonus. So the bank were interconnecting the top. But hmm, Mr. Greenpan, that looked like a genius when he lived, now looked like stupid or, or something or hmm, not working. But it's not only him. Hmm? It's a whole society phenomenon. Well, if you take economists, economists normally have a tendency to concentrate here. Huh? Well, regulatory economists, a little bit here. Lawyers are more interesting here. Politicians are more interesting here. Hmm? Today, I was reading the news here when I arrived here. It said, General Motors, banks, and who else was, uh, are asking more money. Hmm? They, they, they say, well, they forget about that. Now, there is a professor and judge here in Chicago that has been making a whole career about inventing the relation between law and economics. Mr. Posner, Richard Posner, you know that in the whole field 
about that. But here I want to put a third thing that I want to call norms. And you can put other names there. It could be morals, it could be ethics. That we are not only ruled by law. Law is more considered is more concerning with the negative things to do. But, but there are also people interested in positive things to do. And I believe that a great part of the secret of Obama, I am not speaking in his favor here, he already was elected, eh? is that he connected these three things. So we need to do a reform here that changed the market, eh? position the country in a different way, but he appealed to new norms. Eh? And norms are things that are not in the law. These are more in the ethics, society. Hmm? I say the center of norm is change. Hmm? So you, you are a person that has changed because you, you are ashamed of doing something that you don't need to do the law. Or celebration too. Hmm? Or congratulations and things like that. But here we are going to put a, another element here, new one. It's said architecture. Who, the person that invented this diagram is not mine. It's a professor Lessig, who used to be in Stanford, and he's the leader of the create, uh, common, Creative Commons, and we are friends. He invented this story in a paper many years ago that if you want to analyze a political system, you need to analyze this fourth system. You want to change the behavior of people, you have market, you have law, you change the ethics, or you change the architecture. Let me define what is that. Architecture is, is what's so, basically. It's what already is there defining what is possible, what is not possible. And that's why we, we think about architecture, come to our own mind, the Constitution. And all the countries that have a Constitution is the law that we don't want to change every day. Hmm? We want to take for granted that we have a system. Hmm? Hmm. Anarchy. Anarchical countries that change president and constitution the whole days. In Chile, we have a problem. We have today a constitution that was done by Pinochet. But it's the constitution that we have. We have, we have rules to change that, but it's not very complicated. Well, you have the same, one tradition that you have. That's why this country has certain things that produce admiration. Remember the election of a... a Bush with the Gore. Hmm? The Gore won number of votes. But the people have certain rules and they follow the rules. Hmm? The Constitution said that, the law said that, and finally, no one invented a revolution for that, including Gore. He invented himself again. Hmm? Now in Mr. Weather. Hmm? I said, if I look at my colleagues in the Senate, they live with the illusion that this is the only thing that exists. We pass a law, and we believe that we are superior people. We don't have feedback mechanism. We don't have a correction mechanism. Horrible. Companies are a lot better. Companies at least have market competition. Parliament don't have competition in the election. Then the only competition that they are interested in to do in this domain is to be re-elected. And, and, and for doing re-election, we, we in politics are talking about what we don't know how to do. Promise that can never be fulfilled, expectation that never can be fulfilled, because we don't have the tool to do that. And in a global economy, that's more and more and more so. And you, the scientists, are one of the people that make make story, because where do you exist here? You exist around here. Because sometimes you can modify the market by new way to do things, hmm? nanotechnology, hmm? but also you depend on this. And I believe that what is interesting now is that the digital economy has invented a new architecture that no legislature has approved. It happened. And, uh, but after a while, it begins to be the reality that we need to live. We don't like that people investigate our name in, in 
in Google or whatever, but it's the case. The architecture is now there, that, hmm, uh, et cetera. And it could be problems. Hmm? Because I want to put a, a, the last uh, system here, for which I don't want to talk, but I want to not forget, I'm going to put here, with a different deal, and I'm going to call this terror. There are some people that are experts in produce fear, hmm? threat, that are not only the attack that they do and the killing or maiming that they do, it's also affect the market. Hmm? The respect for the law disappears, or a democracy, democracy begins to live with different law that happened with Bush. No? that they lose the country, and the people begin to get more cynical and scared. And one of the weak points is the architecture. If you attack the computer system, the electrical system, the whole thing, you have that. Huh? For example, what happened in India, the last attack in Mumbai, is terror. Hmm? So I want to get some people, not for affecting these people only, it's for affecting what the rest of the world think about the future. Hmm? That's why I believe this movie is so important. It's going to be good for India. You want to change the mood of people. But the question is, how do you prepare yourself to be a person that live like leader in this system? Now, when you arrive to be a president for him, or a senator, modest law of a country like me, we are not prepared for that. Because there are no discipline of knowledge that can deal with the problem of intentionality like we do. And that's has been studied in philosophy a little bit. And there are people now working. Hmm? The practical reasoning cannot be separated from emotions, for example. Hmm? And emotion, like you know, has many different dimensions. Hmm? It's biological, hmm? it's molecular, but it's also social, uh, it's also behavior. Then, the, what I'm looking here is how I produce education, for a world that's going to be more interconnected in which you are going to be network citizens in this different system. Hmm? So I am with my computer in my house, but I am in the market when I am doing, hmm? I am doing process like citizen. I can be voting in the future, or I can be participating. I am also creating a network of friends. Hmm? I can do my religious thing. And we do in planetary scale. That's an interesting story. Hmm? The physical limitation of who, where we are here is not anymore. Hmm? For example, I saw here there are at least one Chilean person. There's another one here studying in the school, the David one, that have been in England and now is postdoc here. Now the Chilean, we can have these people in Chile all the time, no, no importa where they are. And we needed them. We have so many few people that I need to have conversation with him when I am passing law when he lives in California. And, and, and he's more interested because he's in California, because he's more in the conversation of the, of the day. Then I said, the education that we have about knowledge don't take account of this. And, and there are people doing this thing. They are in, the, in the, my old department of philosophy in Berkeley, there are some people they are beginning to think about that. And there are other people from different schools. Very interdisciplinary matters. And I, I don't want to go a lot further in the, in, the, in the question maybe you will have a chance to ask him, Mark. But let me go a little bit about games. How many of you play games, computer games, in your life? Raise your hand for me to know. It's very interesting. I look the age and I know that we're going to raise the hand. Eh? It's 35 year old, <laughs> the cat. Hmm? Second, how many of you play online games? But, yeah, now the numbers decrease. Hmm? Hmm? Well, I play. I believe I'm the only Senator Paladin World of Warcraft in the world. <laughs> Doesn't mean that I'm a good player, but it means that I'm a good Senator playing World of Warcraft. Eh? And, uh, and a very interesting story because when the people in, in Chile that I have reputation to be a little bit crazy and abnormal. Hmm? 
and that is good for being creative. <laughs> and it's a, they begin to play games very soon, because I'm a member of the defense committee, I teach how to play games to the Navy. Then I get to get more serious. Mm? And, uh, and now I just came here, and I did a seminar for the American Navy, and I bring two Chilean admirals, then the scene is very serious now. Mm? But what the games are? Mm? The games, and let us go a little bit about simulators first. Simulators are very interesting things. Third are economic revolution. Let me give you an example. We, 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 we buy to this country from Chile nine F-16, 340 million each one. We buy one simulator, 34 million. A lot cheaper. Hmm? Then simulator and machine in which you get involved with them doing practical action and you short the time of learning that is necessary. And you decrease the risk. Hmm? Because there are many things abnormal that happen. You don't want to land in the action every day. Better do it in a simulator. Hmm? And, uh, but you see the Hudson story is fantastic because there you see a person that has mastery. What mastery is to produce the right action for the first time with the background that you have. Very difficult. And, and one of the things that, that, that is interesting, I see people here in this faculty, this is a woman that I know, Patricia Benner, professor of nursing. They have been investigating what is practical knowledge in health. It's not the same that you no know, books. Hmm? It's to make right decisions for which many times you are not ever encountered the case before. Huh? And normally are social decisions, huh? because you are a patient in a network. Hmm? The, the hospital are networks, the amazing network. Huh? And uh, many of the mistakes that you commit is because the network, don't, the, you don't work well in the network, the network don't work with you. Hmm? The network should be something very crucial in education. Hmm? Let me 